Tonight we kick off our week-long series, Know Your Rights, What a Prospective Employer Can Ask You. That's tonight on the News Hour. Applying for a job can be stressful. Usually you're worried about doing something or saying something wrong, but did you know that there are also questions that they can't ask you? Tonight in Know Your Rights, What a Prospective Employer Cannot Ask You. There's a whole lot of jobs out there. The trick is finding one. I feel nervous because, uh, like I said, I've been out of practice for not having to do one for 12 years. <laughs> Sean Glines worked at Blockbuster for 12 years. Now he's trying to get a job working at the front desk of a hotel or for one of the airlines. I've got a good personality. I'm outgoing. We interviewed him at the Department of Labor building, which is also where Darius Smith McLinden is also looking for a job. I wanted uh, to go into the police force, but anything with helping anybody or helping people. We learned about them during an interview, the same as an employer. But there are certain questions that a prospective boss can't ask. There are 13 areas where you've got some level of protection. That would be questions about race, age, sex, national origin, or religion. Are you married or do you have children? And questions asking if someone is pregnant or if they have a disability are all no-goes. I think they run into them all the time because the mail I get, the email I get, the calls I get are that people are being asked a lot of questions. Dr. Lynn Curry is an author and expert on workplace issues. She says if someone asks you questions about the forbidden topics and you feel like you didn't get a job because they didn't like the answer, you can file a complaint. She also said, remember the interview starts the moment you walk in the door. If you're being interviewed, there's nothing that's small talk. If you're being interviewed, you're being assessed from the moment you sit down in front of the receptionist to the moment you get in the elevator and, and leave. So put your best foot forward, avoid personal information, and good luck. I'm honest, I'm a hard worker, I'm reliable. And that's a lot to offer. If you are house or apartment hunting, it pays to know your rights before you start your search. Channel 2's Jill Burke has more on how to safeguard against unfair fees, bad landlords, broken down units, and outright discrimination. Jill. Alexis and Rebecca, a house in disrepair, bad roommates, fee-hungry, racist or discriminatory landlords, young or old, single or married, nobody wants these headaches. And here's how to avoid these problems. And in the event they do occur, a few go-to tactics to get relief. First off, the biggie, your identity, the things that make you you. They can't be used as excuses to deny you access to housing. That means based on based on your race, your religion, your national origin, color, gender, disability, or familial status. Familial status is fair housing lingo for families with children. Dan Koontz is a fair housing expert. If any time a landlord appears to be treating you different as a, as a housing applicant or as a tenant already, then there are laws that, that say that that's illegal. If something seems off. Sure, sometimes it's very overt. Sometimes it's just a suspicion. Federal, state, and city laws can help sort it out. We can dig into that a little more and try to prove that the intent was discriminatory, not necessarily just a, a, mm -hmm. an innocent misunderstanding. There are also housing protections for survivors of domestic violence. If someone is trying to extricate themselves from a domestic violence situation, um, then the survivor should be the one who's allowed to stay regardless of whether they're on the lease, uh, regardless of all the other factors. They're the ones who should be able to stay in the home and the perpetrator should be the one who, who's forced to leave. If you're disabled, you also have a right to safe ways to get in and out of or move safely within your home. It is discrimination to deny a request for a reasonable modification, which means a sort of structural modification to a unit like a ramp or a grab bar. Is a specially trained dog or other animal a loyal helper? They get to be a part of your home and a cost-free one at that. If that animal is an assistance animal that's required because of a disability, then they're generally not under the same sorts of pet rules and it wouldn't be appropriate to charge extra. The Alaska Landlord Tenant Act covers other aspects of being a renter. For example, a landlord cannot raise your rent during the term of a lease, cannot charge you for normal wear and tear, and cannot collect more than two times the monthly rent for a security deposit. 
a landlord also has to maintain safe, healthy living conditions. If they don't, you might be able to withhold rent, but only under certain circumstances. To try to solve issues, deliver a signed, dated letter explaining the problems to your landlord. Whether small issues or big ones, sometimes all it takes is speaking up. Often they're not aware of what the laws say about this. If that doesn't do the trick, seek out expert help. It's just important for people to know that these protections exist. So obviously there's a lot of information out there. We have much more of it on our website, including a link to Alaska's Landlord Tenant Guide and Legal Guides for Seniors and Youth. Curious which dog names are the most popular or how your neighborhood school rates or how much the mayor makes? Grab your phones, fire up your keyboards. We're about to arm you with the tools that you need to be a citizen sleuth. Jail 2's Jill Burke has more. Alaska favors citizen involvement in and oversight of its government. In fact, state laws give citizens rights to a lot of information, but to get it, you need to know where to find it and who to speak with. The legislature has said this is a fundamental right. Information. If it's said, prerogative of the new administration to ask folks in the outgoing administration whether they want to remain. Done. I think this is um, the beginning of the end of the permanent fund dividend. Earned. It's bringing in much needed revenue to the state of Alaska. Or spent. We've really gone through about $14 billion to get to the point of making the decision on Senate Bill 26. It generally, with a few exceptions, becomes a public record. And those records give everybody the power to hold the powerful accountable. When we appoint people to run, you know, the government for us, you know, we're delegating authority to them, but we're not giving them a right to decide what's good for us to know and what's not good for us to know. Alaska's public records law is clear. Public access to government information is a fundamental right, one that operates to check and balance the actions of elected and appointed officials and to maintain citizen control of government. The government affects kind of every corner of our lives. That means everything from popular dog names to crime reports, business licenses, school performance, road construction, property records, restaurant and daycare inspections, local and state government meetings, and a lot of other things that affect your day can be obtained online by written request or in person. Sometimes it's good to go in and say, here's what I'm looking for, can you help me? A reliable go-to, city clerks. We're here to help. From elections to assembly meetings, they're in the know. We are here to help the public get connected to local government. One of Anchorage Municipal Clerk Barbara Jones's top public information picks, the municipal meetings page. It lists the upcoming assembly meetings and the agenda. That's not all. If it's a past assembly meeting, it lists the past assembly meeting but it has a link to the video and audio of that meeting, as well as the minutes. The clerk's office is just a phone call away at 907-343-4321. And they're on Facebook and Twitter at ANC Muni Clerk. For our final tip, we go back to media attorney John McKay on how much money records should cost. The legislature has said that the first five hours uh, in, in any calendar month of uh, search and copying costs are free for, for any person requesting public records. Fees for research and copying shouldn't be so high they keep information out of reach. Well, as an Alaskan, do you know your rights when it comes to public information and privacy? In the Alaska Constitution, a certain degree of privacy laws exist in subheading reading, quote, the right of the people to privacy is recognized and shall not be infringed. Legislature shall implement this section. Unlike many police forces in the lower 48, the Anchorage Police Department does not release mugshots of suspects or notification of their arrest to the public. APD outlined why their hands are tied in this manner, saying the department does not own the photos and does not take its own. Spokesperson MJ Tim says this decision is directly related to the state of Alaska privacy laws, which, when they are interpreted by state officials with the Department of Law, prevent APD from releasing the photos. Now, the photos themselves, which serve as mug shots, are actually Alaska DMV records and are paid for by the taxpayer and are owned by the state of Alaska. Now, because of this, Tim says, the state owns the photos and the state decides when they'll let APD use them.